okay, I'd like to tell you about my life. My name is Jim Cusimano. Um, a very big part of what I do and what I've learned has to do with life purpose. And I'd like to say a little bit about that before I get into how I learned the importance of life purpose. Here's my idea about how you find your life purpose and what it can do for you. I think everybody comes into this world with something inside of them. I call it their essence, something that you are good at. You're good at probably better than some of the people around you. And I call that your essence. There, it may be a, a hard asset like you're good in the arts, music, science, math, whatever, or it may be something soft like you're a leader or you got courage or you're resilient or you're a team player. And those assets are what make you a special person. Now, the next step is to look into the world and see a need that is that you believe your assets, your essence could make an impact on. This is one of the hard parts. The rest you'll see is gonna be easier. And once you find that need uh, and you get excited about it, that becomes your life purpose at that moment in your life. The life purpose may change with time. Your essence will not. And when you have discovered that life purpose, you will feel a significant elevation in passion. In fact, that passion will be so significant, it will create physical and I would say emotional energy. And the left side and the right side of your brain become connected, you become extremely creative, you're able to solve problems and develop strategies you never could have done before. And for that, you become innovative and you begin to solve things and create things that have value. And for that, the next step is you get a reward. And the reward might be financial, it might be uh, spiritual, it might be emotional, psychological, or some combination of those. And when you get those rewards, you will feel instantly a very significant, significant level of gratefulness. And it's impossible to feel that level of gratefulness without having long-term fulfillment. So this is the, the path that I have discovered for life purpose. Now, why is it important? Because the more people that follow, identify and follow their life purpose in this world, the better off we will be at solving some of the problems we are dealing with and which are really gnawing at the future, like climate control, uh, climate change, like the pandemic, like nuclear pro proliferation, a whole number of these kinds of issues. Now, let me tell you about my life and how I became uh, able to discover uh, what I've just told you. First of all, my capabilities have been in three areas. One is entertainment, the other is science and technology, and the third is business as an entrepreneur. I was born in Elizabeth, New Jersey, grew up there in Newark, New Jersey, right across from Manhattan, the oldest of 10 children, six girls and four boys. My mother had a, a child every two years. As far as I knew, she was pregnant for, for almost 20 years. My father worked in the post office. So as you can imagine, we didn't have very much money. So all of us had to go to work. The girls did something like babysitting. The boys sold newspapers or shine shoes. And, and I didn't like working in the winter, the Jersey winters, which were very cold. So a giant in my life, the first one, my mother said to me, Jim, why don't you take piano lessons? You seem to have a good voice. You like to play, you fool around with the piano at home. And I did that. And I started a small band at the age of 12, 13 years old, playing for weddings, for dances, for schools, and living right across from Manhattan at the, uh, let's say the onset of rock and roll music. I started, I became a recording artist at the age of 15. And I joined uh, a number of uh, groups and I began to travel around with the likes of Fats Domino, uh, Jerry Lee Lewis, uh, Little Richard, and a number of the other pioneers of rock and roll. And so that was my first life. And it taught me a lot about different kinds of people and how to deal with prima donnas. Uh, but I also had a love 
for science, uh, particularly chemistry and physics, because my father wanted me to be a physician and he bought me a chemistry set when I was only nine years old. And so I continued to follow that. I even made things in the cellar of our, uh, my, my home and sold them. So I guess I had an entrepreneurial spirit and uh, I began to, to do that kind of thing. And so eventually, I left the rock and roll business and got a, a bachelor's degree in math and chemistry and a PhD in physical chemistry, went to work for Exxon for seven years, decided that large corporation wasn't for me and with a friend went out to Silicon Valley where we started two public companies, Catalytica Energy Systems to make uh, low cost clean energy and Catalytica Pharmaceuticals for the manufacture of drugs. The latter one, became a very large company, more than 2,000 people, more than 2,300 people in less than five years. Uh, we became a public company on the NASDAQ before we were sold. Um, so that was a very significant um, journey for me. Uh, the, what I did next though, I went back into entertainment. My wife at the time, who is now deceased, uh, was a screenplay writer. And uh, she wrote a movie for our daughter, Polly Cole, now Polly Cole, married to Joe Cole, Joe Robert Cole, who was a screenplay writer for The Black Panther. And uh, we wanted her to be the star of this movie, What Matters Most. And we set out to do that movie in Texas. And um, we found out four weeks before we left that Jane had uh, fourth stage breast cancer. So we knew what was gonna happen. And she said she wanted to do the film, so we did. We did the film, we finished it uh, on May 1st, 2001. And she got to see it on the big screen and unfortunately passed away a month later on June 1st. But it did a lot for uh, her, uh, her, her, uh, her life and it did a lot for Polly's life. And so there I was, I, I was in the entertainment business. I didn't really wanna make any more movies. I did it for my wife and eventually we got it on Lifetime Television. It became one of their top movies and was eventually distributed in 50 countries. So I was sitting there in Southern California where I was living in Ojai, California near Santa Barbara. And I met a very lovely woman, my wife Inez, who had come from Prague. And uh, she had bought a rundown castle and wanted to make it into something special. So we worked together as uh, business partners and also lovers and eventually turned this into Chateau Maselli, which is a five stage, a five star um, a com a castle hotel and um, uh, forest retreat just outside of Prague in the, in the, in the forest there. Um, it has been extremely successful. We opened in 2006. And uh, of course, now we're having some interesting challenges with um, the pandemic, but we think we'll be, we'll be getting through that. And so the reason I talk about Ma uh, Chateau Mazzelli because it gave us an opportunity to give back to the, the greater common good. We have brought uh, change makers like Lance Secretin, who writes about inspirational leadership, Deepak Chopra and others to uh, Chateau Mazzelli. We have also had corporate programs uh, on inspir inspirational leadership and life purpose. And finally, uh, about 10 years ago, I decided to become an author, not only of uh, books like uh, nonfiction books, but also fiction. And so I write in an area that I call wisdom fiction. And the purpose of wisdom fiction is to simultaneously entertain the reader while integrating fundamentals of what I've learned about life. And so I now, I, I weave throughout the fabric of the narrative things about consciousness, life purpose, but do it in a way that doesn't disturb from the fact that it's a thriller and espionage and a spy thriller. And so this is where I'm doing what I'm doing right now. My latest book, which will be um, published or released on uh, March uh, 16th, coming up very quickly, uh, I, I Can See Clearly. And I Can See Clearly is about a young man who has a near-death experience and uh, becomes a superpower hero. So this is uh, how I learned a lot about life purpose, how I learned a lot about leadership and how I continue to take what I've learned to give to you, the readers of this world.